Sports presents Benning Bites with Damon Benning. Benning Bites with Damon Benning. Another episode of Benning Bites. Ever since Coach Rule made fun of me and, and talking with my hands, I try to keep them occupied, but you know it's not going to work for me. I'll probably end up getting there. However you get us, I appreciate you. Uh, Apple, Google, Spotify, uh, great show uh, yesterday. Well, I hope it's great every day. Uh, at least that's the that's the benchmark. Uh, so maybe you're catching us on 590 in Omaha at 7 or KFOR in Lincoln joining us live at 9. But pretty spirited conversation yesterday, just getting different perspectives um, on the situations. And, you know, yesterday it was kind of the dorm life, and Andrew was was asking me, you know, would it have been something that I would have received well? And we kind of got into this conversation on the why. And he said something that was interesting. It kind of sparked the rest of the conversation, but he said he was looking at it from he would like to spend as much time with his friends as possible. And at no point during that conversation yesterday did I look at it like that. I looked at it as, well, it's work, right? So we're into a days. I'm with those guys all day, every day. I wanted a chance to get to go home, right? I would, I would rush through rehab, not rehab, um, recovery, you know, cold tub, get my tape cut off, shower quick, and I would try to get home, right, because you wanted to rest to be able to get back for the afternoon session with meetings. So I looked at it as more of a, well, how are we with work? Do you want to spend time with your colleagues? And I don't think at any point when Andrew's talking to me did he look at it as work. I think he looked at it as well, I'd like to spend as much time around my friends as possible in college. And that got me thinking because I was like, well, those guys are my friends, right? They were the bulk of my friends. There was only a couple of non-athlete guys that I hung around in during my whole college career. Most of my good friends were um, people that I played with. I had one guy that I met there. He was from David City. Uh, a guy named Jeremy Belsky, and then I had my buddy, Brian, who I knew previously in Omaha. So I didn't really form a lot of new friendships with, with people outside um, the, the, the sports arena. And so that got me thinking, and I'm like, you know what? If I look at it like that, that – that that's a culture that that I would love to be around especially if you don't look at it as a job right if it's just something you do if it's just a part of your DNA who you are and and I think that's the kind of culture that Nebraska is shooting for not only with coach player but coach to coach because we heard coach rule talk ad nauseum about He's not going to ask the players to do anything that he doesn't or isn't willing to do. He holds his staff accountable. The whole caring, not coddling. And I think that includes his staff. We've seen a couple of his press conferences where I actually think he was talking to his staff and not the players. Or, at worst, they would be interchangeable in the dialogue. What he was saying wasn't necessarily for us, right? Don't rest. Keep recruiting. Always grind be comfortable being uncomfortable things like that and so it will we heard coach satterfield's comments a couple of days ago hey man i've never done this in 25 years of coaching this i'm looking forward to this this is exciting that sounds good right and you're hoping to build the kind of culture where you'll want to be around your brothers all the time doing those kinds of things but i i can't believe that i missed the whole um wanting to be around my friends thing because I knew a couple of the instances that Coach Rule is trying to hit on. He's, he said in public and in private, he wants to be a man of the community. He, he, he wants to be out among the people. He's secure enough in who he is that he's going to live his life. He wants his family to be ingratiated in the community, right? He constantly is talking about Julie and, his, and the kids. And, and that's a little bit of a difference for us. See, that's the, 
that's the elephant in the room that I think has really endeared him as a head coach because everybody was different. Coach Callahan was not really personable, especially when it came to family. He was a, he's a football coach, right? Coach Polini, I think, wanted to start out that way with Mary Pat and the kids, but it became so toxic that they kind of retreated. And we didn't hear much about the family. He kept business as business. And then Coach Riley, we, he was kind of the all shucksy, and, you know, he would talk about Dee coming to bring him, his wife coming to bring him coffee and things like that in the office. And we acted like that was like the Waltons or something, and it wasn't tough. Coach Frost was clearly a guy that said in his opening press conference, this isn't about my family. They won't be involved. They're going to do their, they're they're here. Don't ask me about my family. Don't bring it up. So that kind of set that standard. With Coach Rule, from the jump, it was, I mean, who did he give all the credit to? Kind of canvassing Lincoln and his sounding board. So we kind of feel like we, we, we know his wife without really having been around her and the kids, kind of what they, like Brant, like what they, what they bring to the table. And I think that's the way that he wants his team to be. He wants them to be about family. And in this case, the family is about being about each other, around each other. So when Andrew said that to me yesterday on the show, he's like, well, I, I'd like to be around my friends. It, it like dawned on me. I'm like, shoot, you know what? That's the thing that we've been preaching about with the transformation in the athletic department. How do you beat the transfer portal? It's not with money. It's you want to make the environment such a place where you're afraid to leave your family. You're afraid to leave the brotherhood. Like, I like it here. I like being around people like this that are like-minded, that want the same things that I want. I, there's a little trepidation about going out and leaving and thinking the grass is greener on the other side if my grass is pretty green here. And I don't mean green in terms of of Ben Franklin or Andrew Jackson or whomever else, for you bigwigs like Andrew, whoever's on the $1,000 bill, I mean like green is in greener pasture. And when you start to build that kind of environment, that type of culture, because you're around each other and you're in the trenches together and you do things together, we've heard it, the family that stays together, prays together, those kinds of things, that premise while maybe not biblical in this regard, is really about spending time with one another. So is he rolling the dice? I mean, maybe. But if you're building the culture of for one another, I got your six, brotherhood, that's all you need. And he picked Selleck for a reason. I don't know what it is, (laughs) but for a reason. I don't know if they're going to bust back and forth I doubt it. Will they walk? Nah, maybe. Will they? Will they? Will that be some sort of it? Be some part of it? Because when I think about carrying guys on your back and picking teams and being competitive, and remember the one of the great press conferences where Coach Rule said, "Hey, these guys figured out. Hey, I can't always pick my friends. I, I have to." I have to bring the bottom to the top, and I need a big guy, and I need a little guy, and I need a strong guy, and I need a quick guy, and it teaches you to get to know other people's personality traits and kind of what makes them them because then then you're more appreciative. Because remember, and I've said this for years, the real magic starts to happen when you can care and cheer for other people even though it may be at your own expense. That's the epitome of, of, of being selfless. Because we use selfish and selfless interchangeably, and they're, 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 they're not opposites. Selfish, yes, it is being eye-oriented, and it's only about you. But selfless means that you're willing to do some things that are uncomfortable to you for, on somebody that, th- because it's for the greater good, right? And I know you're like, oh, those are, those are really opposites. But... I look at it like this. Selfish is maybe a, a guy that where the ball stops. It gets sticky on the court, right? Selfless isn't necessarily passing. It's, it's not not shooting. It's, gosh, I, maybe I'm going to take a charge. 
or maybe I'm going to help out on help side defense, or maybe I'm going to get on the floor and dive for a ball when I'm a guy that doesn't dive for basketball normally. Do you know what I mean? So it's not necessarily a a direct correlation in terms of the opposite of what you do. It's just doing something that's a little out of the ordinary for you because it's going to benefit others. So not to get all into semantics, but I think that's what this team is after, right? Am I a staff that can be with one another for X amount of straight days? And maybe we meet in the laundry room together and we were eating together. And remember his whole thing about putting the phones down and breaking bread with one another and putting other guys on your back when you carry them and wearing the same things in the weight room. See, those little things matter because I'm telling you sure as I'm sitting here. And you may roll your eyes at this. I don't know. I just think there's something about that stuff that manifests itself in real game situation, in close games. I'm tired. My, I'm a center. My right guard next to me is 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 not feeling great either will I take my brother's pain will I replace what he's going through and get his six will I have his back those kinds of things come from camaraderie and understanding and being around one another hey my right tackle gosh he's he's out here on a bad back his ankles taped he's playing about 70 percent I got it I'm gonna dig down deep for him it's not about me it's going to be uncomfortable Hey, listen, I, I know you shouldn't be able to scoop and get to the second level on a zero stack. Like, if, if, if you get reached there, that guy, linebacker, is probably not a good player. But I'm going to give it what I've got because of it. Be- because I know I've got to get his back. Like, sometimes that stuff manifests itself. When we got our tail kicked in, in Tempe against Arizona State, yeah, there was a lot of individual embarrassment. But I remember Adam True, who was playing left tackle, saying, man, I got I to gotta protect my quarterback better. I, I can't let Sam Rogers do that. It, my, my quarterback was taking some shots. Or Frost saying, hey, you know what, man, I got to get rid of that ball earlier. Like my offensive line protected well enough for me to do something with that football. That's not on them. And I know those words sometimes don't – you think they mean the same, but when – you're, you're wanting to do better so somebody else can function and look better? Man, it, it matters. <laughs> it absolutely matters. And so but before you give it the eye roll or say, oh, man, all this is, it's, it's kind of what good teams do. We're just not used to it. That, that's, that's really what this is. This is just good, solid leadership. We just aren't used to it yet. And I think over time it will pay dividends, but in the meantime, embrace it. Because ultimately, and I can't predict the wins and losses or this is plus two in the win column or whatever, I just simply think it's best practices. And for those that are in education, best practices simply means it's not foolproof, but it gives you the best chance to have the desired positive outcome you want. And that's really what it's about. It's another episode of Benning Bites.